Hi, I'm James Goel. I'm here with Visa today. I'm excited to tell you about our new DisplayPort automotive extensions uh, and C-Model emulator to make car displays a lot safer and secure. In your modern automobile, there are many, many displays. These displays have all of the critical information that the driver needs and the passengers are using, both for safety and security. Our new protocol ensures that safety and security. There are particular aspects to the driver information display outlined in yellow. For example, a lot of these telltale signals are required by law to be extra safe and extra secure. Our new protocol not only ensures the entire frame is safe and secure, that these yellow special regions of interest get extra attention. You can see here on the corner where the glass has been replaced by a sensor that these special icons are extra protected with our new protocol. So it's uh, uh, against the hacking or the errors? It's against both. If you are, for example, backing up and you're not sure if your rear view camera has frozen or repeated, our new protocol will not only ensure hackers haven't tampered with your device, and it could be from the source, the transmission, or in the, and the camera itself, but there could be a mechanical fault that's causing a safety issue. Our new protocol addresses that. I'll just show you here. You can see these different icons. If there is some sort of mistake or broken icon as you're changing lanes, our new protocol will indicate electronically that you have a problem. So there's encryption going on? There's at both. There's what's called a CRC mathematical algorithm to check for functional safety. And with our advanced profiles, we also have security. And I know what people are asking, what's driving this new technology? Why are we doing this? You can see, and you'll see later in the video, all the demonstration and work that's been put behind it. There are new world standards driving functional safety and new world standards driving cybersecurity for automobiles. I'd like to just also point out that these specifications here are next generation for security, for automotive displays and security in general. And we have a new software model that we're also showing that lets you understand and run simulations for car makers who actually will build this and use this model to accelerate certification. The last thing I'll say is that the rest of the demonstration allows you to have very sophisticated mobile displays. Visa not only does single point-to-point -point displays, but our model and technology will work across all of the different very complicated displays in a modern automobile. So sometimes they are like, uh, you call it chained one by one or yes. together? Sometimes they're chained, sometimes they're separate. If they're in the rear of the car, they'll be at the bottom. Sometimes they'll be at the front. If you can go back in the slides. Uh, so you, when you were showing all the displays, like uh, the, the reason that we here at the Visa booth is also because there's many more and more displays in the cars yes. and they're all connected in a system. Exactly. What you're seeing here, the proliferation of displays are happening because we have more electrification, we have more driving automation, so people need more entertainment. But more importantly, displays are becoming lower cost and are deploying and making your car experience much more exciting. The thing that you have to have is additional safety to ensure that these displays always accurately give you information that you need to drive and operate the car properly. For the safety. And there's also considerations with the self-driving future. Exactly. What you're seeing here is uh, when cars are driving, you want to make sure that all the displays are properly secured. What you don't want to do is have any sort of cybersecurity incident as you're driving your car because you rely on these displays for safety. Uh, when you look at the history of the automobiles, it's amazing, but it sounds like from some of the hacker conferences that they're saying that the security has not been considered enough in the past. I think that may be true. I do know that we've had a lot of work 
put into our advanced profiles that ensure these displays are properly secured using a lot of different algorithms. We have algorithms in the specification from the United States, in North America, Europe uses different algorithms, and Asia has their own set. All of them are supported in our standard. So is there like uh, an engine, something behind this that kind of controls everything securely? Yes, let me show you here. There is a main DisplayPort Visa engine that allows you to see everything. This diagram shows the main Visa DisplayPort transmitter engine followed by the main DisplayPort receiver engine. What we've done in our new specification is add an extra layer of safety and security on top of both the transmitter and receiver layers. And that's the FPGA demonstrations that you'll see later in the video. Is it going to be hardware or is it software layer? The answer is yes. It's a combination of both. In order to ensure that your display performance is not degraded, degraded, that is all hardware based. However, a lot of the safety and security requires comprehensive software and we actually have a C model that allows you to develop that software for both security and safety. And it needs to be very uh, high performance, instant, Yes, real -time. you'll see that in our FPGAs in a second. The changes are quite minimal, but they do have to be performant. And what you'll see is, in order to ensure that it's on a per frame basis, every single frame needs to have these calculations. And because if you drop a single frame, you'll know instantly that there's an error. That kind of performance can only be done with hardware. Are there very advanced algorithms or something that does the error error checking correction and how does that work? Yes, so the error, we chose specific algorithms that were used in other applications to ensure that our standard would interrupt well with cameras, with ethernet, and in the future other wireless uh, interfaces. Our algorithm is called the CRC32 algorithm for the functional safety. And for the security, we use world standard algorithms like AES and MD5. Those algorithms have been well tested and are standardized by governments. We use different algorithms in Europe and in Asia. There's more and more Ethernet coming in the cars? There may be, but this is mostly a display standard, so I, I can't comment on that. All right. Uh, but do you do also the display over Ethernet? No. This is only display within the embedded vehicle. All right. And here at the booth, uh, I can do a separate video after, but you have a a partner implementing already? Yes, we have. Today we're announcing a few different partners. Today we have MediaTek that's demonstrating their FPGA, and I'll introduce you to MediaTek. We also have another partner, BTA Design Services, that have their FPGA design. So, yeah, please uh, interview them and learn more about it. Hi, my name is Tong Shen Ling from MediaTek. This is our latest uh, development about uh, the uh, DisplayPort AE uh, demonstration system, which is based on the two big FPGA boards. And uh, this FPGA board is about uh, the DPAE uh, source device, and uh, this is a from the sync device. It's connected with the uh, DPA cables. So, in and the, what are you testing between them? Uh, we are going to, to test the two important features of the uh, DPAE system. One is the change the ROI region of interest in real time. And uh, in this demonstration, we're going to change it uh, to 7 ROI to uh, 4 ROI in real time without the uh, interruption. And then the second feature we want to demonstrate is uh, error recovery uh, mechanism. Uh, when there is an error happened, then we're going to recover the whole system to uh, restart the system. So it's uh, don't miss any uh, important uh, detail. Is it high performance? Yeah. Okay, so let's have a test. Okay. Uh, let's start the test. And uh, then, yeah, this is the okay. initialization. You see from source side. And then, in the first stage, uh, we have a generate seven uh, region of interest. And uh, then here is the location and uh, the uh, uh, CRC from the source side and CRC at the receiver side. And then uh, with a few seconds, you will see change to the different uh, settings. 
Is it sending in some errors, or what is it no, doing? Not yet. It changed to four ROIs. Now it's a, you can see it switched to different pattern. So um, here it's, and then here right now we see that uh, we inject some errors. You can see that this, uh, this uh, CRC does not does match. So when the error CRC error reaches to certain threshold, they go through the recovery process. All right. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Gary DePelto. I'm with BTA Design Services. Um, BTA was uh, engaged by VESA to develop the automotive extension um, reference model that James Gall was just talking about. And um, we are an engineering service firm that also does ASIC, FPJ, and SOC uh, design engineering services. And um, in addition to doing the reference model, we are also developing some products to uh, provide to the automotive extension display interface yeah, ecosystem to help adoption um, and help customers bring automotive extension to market sooner. So what we're developing are a couple things. At the show, we're showing a demonstration of our FPJ validation platform. It implements uh, the main data path function of the automotive extension profile zero right now. So if, if you take a look at our, our slide there, this is a, a, a basically uh, covers the overall FPJ uh, demo, but we've got basically a source uh, system on the right, which represents an ECU in a car, and we've got a sync system on, or source system on the left, and a sync system on the right, which would represent the display controller in an automotive display. And what our demo does, uh, it's, it'll be hard to see, I'm sure, but um, we are calculating a CRC that covers the active video frame in the source, we are adding it and sending it over the display port link to our sync. And at that end, it recalculates the CRC on the video frame. It checks it versus what was received from the source and it compares and it will detect CRC errors. And this is just one part of the automotive extension functionality that James was talking about. And you know, we will be offering profiles zero through three in our FPGA validation platform. And also in the, the IP that we are offering um, so this IP indicated by the green box is here. This is our source IP. This is our sync IP. And companies who develop uh, SOCs or FPGAs for automotive ECUs or display controllers for displays, if they want a jumpstart bringing automotive extension features to their silicon, we will have this IP to offer to help them get there quicker. And would we do that? We'll be doing it as the company that developed the reference model for VESA. So we're one of the first companies working in the world in this in this technology, and hopefully we have some of the deeper experience. So you'll see other another demo, but our demo, we are offering these products to other semiconductor companies. Uh, is there a lot of performance that could be needed to do the cor uh, error error checking? What do you call it? So you get into really high performance when you start doing high resolution 4K, 60 frames per second, 16 ROIs and doing CRCs and um, individual um, security signatures on those. So you need a lot of performance. And there's a lot of bandwidth that needs to be checked on yeah, a lot of data. I mean, it's, a, it's a high bit rate and there's a, a lot of computation that needs to be done per second when you are stock, talking about those sorts of specs, right? So that's why you need to do it in hardware. You can't keep up with this sort of thing in software. So it requires hardware solutions. And do you help the chip makers uh, implement this in the future chips? Yeah, that's right. That's the idea behind our IP. Um, it integrates with existing DisplayPort TX and RX IP, and it is an add-on that can be added into. So let's say the chip makers have an existing ECU SOC, and they've already got DisplayPort on it, right? Um, we can work with them and, and show them how to integrate our IP in there so that they don't have to build up that expertise, they don't have to ramp up, and um, we've got a product that's developed that we can help them integrate. Is it nice to work on, on stuff that's kind of like in the future, like to be yeah. the first to do stuff? Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's largely what we do um, at, at BTA. We're generally working on sort of new leading edge stuff. So it's definitely cool to see something new in automotive that's uh, sort of makes them a lot, the display interfaces at least a lot more tamper-proof and susceptible to 
errors and stuff. And it also helped some companies uh, use um, maybe perhaps less, you know, they'll, they'll help them cut costs in other areas because we will be able to sort of mitigate sort of um, uh, issues that might pop up if there are some bit, bit flips in the, in the signal or whatnot. We will catch that sort of thing. Hi, I'm Dan Pei. I'm one of the uh, design engineers for uh, BTA Design Services. Um, as my colleague Gary was saying, we've develop, developed IP for um, the DisplayPort Automotive Extension. And the beauty of it is our custom IP. We're showing uh, an off-the-shelf FPGA card from a specific vendor here, but we can work with any vendors. And um, so it's 100% custom. Um, portable to any vendor cards, and eventually we could uh, integrate this into A6 as well. So you can uh, optimize with the FPGA, work with them and do Yeah, we can work with the FPGA and, and our, our boards can be used as a validation for testing companies, uh, but also for other people looking to integrate this IP into, into their products. All right, Nicholas. So I just want to wrap up here by showing all these great electronics, all these implementations of the new DisplayPort automotive extension. You've got different uh, transmitters, receivers here, showing the different regions of interest. You have another version here showing a more advanced version with regions of interest and real-time test patterns. The key takeaway that I'd like to show and the, the key message for your viewers is to come join the technical standards at Visa. Learn more about automotive display extensions. Understand why security is so important and come become part of the process. Great, thank you.